Hi, this is Cronoon. Welcome to the fourth part of the speedrun tutorial for Dynamite Heady. Today we're going to cover scene five um, because it has some tricky stuff there. Now, let's check out this video, which is now dated since the last tutorial part I made. Anyway, um, so here, this stage 5 1, uh, you don't really do anything in the American version at least. There is one thing in the Japanese version, but basically all you have to do is make that one jump and this cutscene will automatically push you to the next area. It's just really... it's not <laughs> anything to explain. There is a lot to explain about Star Wars, but we'll get there in a bit. Um, I'm gonna open up this emulator and see if I can find that safe state. Yes. Okay, so the difference here is there is going to be another text box that pops up, and um, yes, let me just show you. So you go here now. Uh, so the visual cue is. Hold on, let me um, see if I can show. I can't. Whatever. All right. So there is a. Uh, if you look at the background here, you see these these mountains. Um, and there is like tiles behind the mountains because it's a background prop, right? So you see that horizontal line that's right underneath the health bar. Um, let's see if I can't. No. Yeah, okay. So you see this window here, the CPU window where pause emulation is. Um, it's basically in line with this line that I'm pointing to. So go all the way right, and you see the one right above Mariyama's head there. Basically, when his ear is touched that is when the text box pops up. So once he gets in that area, just be ready to hit start. And that's it. Okay, now Stair Wars. Um, this stage is going to be... Uh, your favorite, most hated stage of this game in the run. It is a giant pool of RNG. Um, there is a huge difference between the Japanese and American versions. Um, I'm not even going to bother explaining what's going on here. This is just what I got in this run. Um, I will show a better version. Um, but basically, the Japanese run Star Wars is always going to be two minutes and a half. It's basically an auto scroller. I'll show what that is. But the American version has a bunch of RNG and that can make it change from like three and a half minutes or more to like four minutes, maybe even five minutes, down to one minute. Or more likely like a minute and a half. So with everything else being perfect, the American version can be just by RNG alone, three minutes to a min three minutes behind to a minute faster. So this is the main time difference between the two versions, and it's pretty important. Fortunately, um, I've since discovered, with the help of Blaze Flazard, who did a new task, that this cannot actually be manipulated. Now I thought for the longest time it could be manipulated which is why I was kinda of waiting to make this video because I didn't know 100 percent what you do to manipulate it. Like I would jump at a certain phase in the swaying cycle of Trouble Bruin's animation there um, but that doesn't do anything at all. It is completely RNG um, basically every time he's not charging at you like every frame or two frames, he'll decide almost 50-50 between charging at you or not charging at you. And so when that's activated at the, the trigger, um, it's just one of those values is locked on and then he does it. The only way to advance the RNG, which is on frame timer by the way, is to have idle animations. Um, don't do idle animation thinking that's going to save you. It's Unless you have the RAM address in front of you, it's not going to help. And even then, 
it's not going to help if you can't just pause the game. This is pretty much a task only fact. So basically, this is actually a good thing because what it means is that you don't need to worry about this stage. Um, because if it gives you bad luck, you got bad luck. And I'd recommend playing the game out even with bad luck because there's plenty of game left. There's plenty of hard parts left, especially at the end of the game. And it sucks, but you can't grind for good RNG all the time. Of course, if you get, like, really bad RNG, then it's fine. But basically, just don't worry about that stage. When you get to it, um, you know, make some memes about, like, praying for RNG or something. There's not much you can do. In fact, there's nothing you can do. But it's a completely different situation if you get really good RNG. If you get really good RNG, um, you're gonna have to fucking try really hard to not screw up. Uh... If you're starting out, good RNG will make your run. Um, even even now, at my level, I'm going for like sub-38s now. Good RNG like guarantees a low time, whereas it's much, much harder, and there's more RNG to worry about if you get a mediocre to worse Stair Wars. It, there's a lot of room there to develop the run, and this run can go sub-37 even because of Stair Wars. It's, uh, it's hefty. There's not really anything to say about it, though, in terms of what you need to do. Except for one thing, I should mention. Um, but I'll get to that in the Japanese version. It's a very small time save. Uh, you can do it in both versions. You basically just move Trouble Bruin slash Mariyama um, with your own movement. I'll explain in more detail in a little bit. Here, let me just show you, though, what a really good Stair Wars it looks like. So this time is a 107, and it's it's lagging a lot. Yeah, it's a little better. Mainly here, you just don't want to fall down and get hit, lose damage, or gain damage. You just don't want to. So you can see my ugly face here. I mean, you can see that I just got three hits. Four hits. <laughs> Five hits. This is pretty remarkable to see hits go in a row like that. You might get two, but six? I think this goes up to seven, too. That's right, yeah. Like, that's fantastic. That is as fast... Oh, it's a full eight. Okay. It's as fast as you go. The only reason why this isn't perfect is because I didn't get... Um, the first hit as quick as possible. But all of those eight hits were in a row. That is amazing. That's what you want to see in like a really good Stair Wars. But there's no way you can control that. So if you don't see it, don't worry about it. If you do see it, you should properly get hyped. Okay, so let's go back to this emulator. Um, okay. Okay, so this is a Japanese version. You can always tell because the headlight here in the top left doesn't have an H in it. So, yeah, they added that in the American version. So besides the color differences, it seems the same, but you'll quickly catch on to the pattern. By the way, um, when the tower starts falling, if you jump, you get a really high jump off it. It's useful to know how to do, just so that you can move yourself further up the tower quicker. Um, but it's really not important to, like, jump. If there's a platform up there, I'd land on it. So here, there's a hit. And by the way, people ask me this, you can't land multiple hits on either version. Um, you just can't do it. It'll just ding. There's, there won't be any damage. So he's gonna move here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold duck I'm gonna duck, I'm gonna hold down, and then I'm gonna hold left. And that's gonna make Mariyama here move to the right. Like that. And that just brings him back to the initial position more quickly than if you don't let him do it. Um, but it's not a huge thing if you don't do it. 
You can also move him the other way and he'll whip back with extra speed. But it's just something you can do. So I'm gonna do it the other way now. He goes over here. Um, okay, that wasn't that fast. <laughs> but it, it's still... It's a very small time save, so basically you just want to move him to the right. But as you're noticing, this seems pretty consistent, right? Here is another charge. So the thing about the Japanese version is he'll do three scythe attacks where he knocks out a chunk of the tower, and then after that he charges at you, then he does three more scythe attacks, then he goes back. That's the pattern. So we got three more here. And he also has half as much HP. So that means after the fourth hit, he's done, and this stage is finished. So when he dies in either version, you just want to get to the top of the tower. If you're on the bottom half of the tower, damage boosts off the gap to get sent flying up. Um, you'll be able to land on t the second to highest step platform. Um, not like the top one, don't think it's gonna send you all the way up. It'll send you like three quarters of the way up. But use that if you're low, otherwise just jump up. And then when the stage stops scrolling, then you just wanna jump up. You can just spam jumps up too, it's, it's fine. Okay. Um, not really much more to explain about Star Wars, just uh, don't worry about it too much, um, especially as you're starting out, everything else is going to be more important to play better at. Uh, Star Wars is just something, it's one of actually a few giant parts, giant pools of RNG you're just going to have to uh, take a risk on. Um, but in the Japanese version, you actually have less of it, so this is why... I'm recommending the Japanese version for beginners of this game, of the speedrun, because, f namely, you don't have to worry about the Star Wars RNG. You don't, and generally, it's a more easy version. And the other parts that have RNG, Gatekeeper and Dark Demon, have half as much health, so you don't have to worry about it RNG even as much. Um, so that's that's a good way to get into this game. It'll be a lot more execution-based and easier to boot. Um, but the American version is pretty nuts. Uh, you will, even with perfect execution, at some point you're going to have to grind just for RNG. And it's not something that will kill you completely. Some RNG will. Some really bad RNG will kill you, kill your runs. But uh, generally, st I'd recommend still playing through because there's a lot of tricks that can bring you back up to speed. And there's more than one parts of bad RNG or slash good RNG, so if you get really bad Star Wars, you can bring it back, um, as long as your PB is not too low. Anyway, let's move on to the next stage. Towering Infernal, or Go Up. Um, so first off, you can actually uh, down jump and then take the, uh, the damage boost jump to go to the left and get to that Hangman a little earlier but it's going to be a little more awkward in terms of grabbing it. So the easier way is uh, to grab this Hangman, to just run right, grab it. So what you do is basically as soon as you start moving, jump and diagonal shoot at it. And then you'll be able to grab it when the head comes back down. You want to keep moving right. When you're in the air, do another diagonal shot. And then turn left, because Hangman is closer on the left side uh, than on the right. And uh, these things here, these f are flamethrowers. That's also they're also RNG based. Um, they might be spouting flame at you. You can still grab Hangman and uh, not hit the flame, or still go through if you hit the flame like high up on it. But if you do see flame, I'd say starting out, don't go for it. Just wait a little bit. It, they really don't last that long. It's unfortunate, but it's RNG. So what can you do? Anyway, you can see the basic movement of this beginning part is just jump and diagonal shots. And then uh, you want to wait a little bit longer for this one, but still, same movement. Okay, so here's the first mini boss of the stage. Um, it takes five seconds from when you first land here to when the arm is fully spread out and 
able to be hit. And so where you want to move is actually on this tile here, um, or actually between these two tiles. You can see these, these little uh, slices in between the bricks. And I'm only going to show it like one more time later, but they're useful reference. You want to be about here because that's where this arm is going to be spawned when it starts out. Um, you can go on the opposite side, but since you just start out moving here, it's just easier to get yourself set up. So five seconds. Um, you can spam up shots or you can just wait. Uh, so that was an early sh an early hit, and uh, I missed this next hit here. But So what you want to do here, you want to kill one arm, then kill the other arm. And that's basically going to be a, a combination of diagonal shots and horizontal shots. So you got that first hit in, that first vertical. If you miss the first vertical, go for a diagonal. Um, but then another diagonal. When it drops down, horizontal. Diagonal, jump diagonal, and that kills that one. This way, as you're moving right, jump diagonal, wait for it to drop, horizontal, diagonal, diagonal, and then horizontal. And of course, you mix it up depending on how close it is. Horizontal fits farther away, but um, orthogonal to you, and diagonal is if it's in a different position. You do need to understand how this boss is animated, what its attacks are in this uh, beginning phase. You have to, uh, you might need to practice this to get that timing down. Um, it's fairly simple. It shouldn't be too hard to get to that point. Um, he gets easier after this. He'll start doing like a, a diagonal sliding attack across the whole cylindrical area here. And then he'll have like um, one arm on the ground and one arm on the ceiling just spinning around. And you can just hit them with horizontal shots and then jump out of the way and horizontal shot or stuff like that. Um, it's a really simple mini boss, but it's pretty fun. I'd recommend just playing around with him until you can get this uh, type of timing down. And uh, yeah, so get up there early. And actually, you want to stop about the fourth uh, crevice before Hangman here. Um, so you're going to wait. And this, uh, by the way, this shield here in the background is going to stop right there. And that's going to basically stop the animation of the background. Um, depending on how your fight goes, it might scroll in a different position. You're going to still have to wait for that shield to drop there. Um, and there's, you need a little bit of buffer here. If it's like right here, um, when it's supposed to be like right here right now, it will just move right past it. It's hard to explain it. Um, but basically, the background is actually part of the timing here. So you want to get a quicker fight in general. Um, so yeah. You want to be a little bit left of this hangman up here because you're going to be jumping up to shoot him. You can do it from the other side too. doesn't really matter. The reason why you're not directly beneath it, you can do this. But these holes in the background will be shooting cannonballs at you. And it doesn't happen all the time. But they're on a different, they're on RNG timer, so that will shoot at you, and sometimes it'll hit you, and it'll make you miss your shot. So it's better to have a little bit more movement so that you can jump over it, or you can hit it, or you can just have a little bit more room to worry with, uh, to work with, to worry about. It's up to you. Um, it's just something you should know. And uh, so here, again, you go up, and then there's these, these drop balls at you. It's the same thing as a flamethrower. If you see it happening, just wait. If you don't, just go for it. This is the armor dillo fight. Um, there is a set way to defeat this boss, and you want to defeat him before he goes back into rolling phase. And uh, actually, a little earlier than that, too. This is for the uh, background animation cycle. So he's going to stop in the middle, he's going to open up, and he's going to jump two jumps to the left. So you can get two hits in, even three, but you can definitely get two hits in before he stops on the left side here. So he's going to jump, do a diagonal shot, and then he'll drop and then jump again. Go to the other side and do a diagonal shot, or just damage boost through. And uh, basically when that's done, head case up here is going to have the time stop head uh, available for you. Go for it immediately. 
don't wait, just go for it. This is the head that you want to make this fight fast. The other ones are not going to help you nearly as, as much. Um, by the time you go and grab it, he's going to have jumped off the ground again, so don't worry about waiting for him. Just go and grab it. If you got it too early somehow, um, as long as he's jumped, you can still hit him. If he's like just jumped like a few pixels, then just go back, cancel, and grab it again. Um, it's That would be unfortunate, but it's not going to happen most of the time. So your time stops activated, just go up close, don't miss your shots, he's right there. And uh, do like a diagonal, or like a horizontal if he's really low, uh, like a ducking horizontal. But just like upshoot most of the time. And you want to get 13 hits in. Uh, 13 hits is as fast as many hits as you can get with the fastest hits possible. So this is a good way to practice your fastest timed hits. You can't spam hits in this game, that's not going to help you. You won't be able to get the fastest damage done if you spam hits. you got to know the timing, and this is a good way to practice it. Robo Collector in the beginning, again, is a good way to practice it. Um, basically, when the sound effect of an enemy taking damage is uh, finished, it's that squishy sound. Once that's finished, and also when the... Uh, the little exploding animation of, with like the stars and the the white spikes. Once that finishes too, they'll finish up at the same time. Once those are off screen and out of your ears, just press B again, and you will be able to get that hidden. Um, don't try to anticipate it unless you're really intent on getting absolutely perfect timing. It's just better to get like just a basic good timing. There are points. We're anticipating shots where, like, you shoot before the enemy is vulnerable so that it hits when it's vulnerable will work. I'd recommend not worrying the heck about that at all. Just don't worry about it. You will be able to learn that on your own. Um, just, But you do need to worry about getting good timing. It's essential for the next boss. But anyway, before that, so two hits on the jumps and then 13 hits max on the, this time stop here. So that'll cancel. Uh, don't move. He will drop on you, and you'll be damage boosted to the right. Um, just go right into his hitbox and just spam him. You just need three more hits. You want to see this window up here um, by the time you kill him. It needs to be on the top half of the screen. Um, and a quick way of getting up here is to just, again, down jump, take the damage boost jump all the way up here. Uh, you can also just wait for Hangman, just like run around and grab Hangman. That's slow. Only do that if you're low health. Um, yeah, uh, but more often than not, it's just going to be faster for you to just down jump and go up here. It's super simple. But when he's done exploding, you're still, you see, we're having to wait for the background to finish animating again. So this window is going to drop all the way till above this floor segment here. And now, if it's in a different spot, say when say you see the window when it's when armadillo is done exploding, like before uh, this point, like earlier, it's gonna just go right past, and you have to wait for it to finish another cycle. And I think that takes about six seconds. I think it's six seconds is a the rule for that one. Um, so here at this last portion, uh, if you this is something I need to tell you. If you did down jump to get up here with that um, taking damage from like the death pit, it's not really a death pit in this game, but if you uh, if you do do that, the camera is going to actually be scrolled up, and you won't be able to finish the stage because your jump just won't reach the top of the screen. So the simple way of fixing the camera here is just jumping. It'll move the camera back down and reset it, and then you just uh, take that hangman up and then jump again. Um, I can try to show this off, but I don't think I can get it. Uh, but there is actually a slightly faster way of fin finishing the stage. So, if you're right here, um, you can try to do this. I can try to do this. Can I even get it? Okay.
it's pretty it's pretty difficult and it's really not that worth it but if you do this right you're able to just skip the jumping part there we go you're able to just skip the jump and just go straight through the top all right so let me show that again with a different safe state this is the boss of the scene um, and this is a Japanese version obviously so the text box appears very quickly here Basically, as soon as Hedy lands on the ground, he's going to start jumping up. But once he lands, that's when it appears. So again, lands shows up. Again, one more time. Lands shows up. And that's a fight. That's that's how the fight begins. And that's the last of the differences for scene 5 uh, between American and Japanese. It's otherwise the same. Now, let me show you this boss. More than Star Wars, this is um, a really big boss in a speedrun. This is not something you need to worry about when you're a beginner in this game, but it is something that's a pretty big time save that's completely execution based. Now that should make your ears perk up if you're starting to get familiar with this because you should know how strongly this game depends on RNG. I've hopefully been stressing that enough with the talk about Star Wars. This boss is pure execution. There is no RNG at all, and if you do this boss perfectly, you can save basically half a minute. 28 seconds to be exact. However, you need to have very good timing. In fact, um, for half of the fight, you need to be able to land sh shots within two frames. Now don't worry about that two frames, but that sounds really hard. Um, it's not... It's it's it represents like how tight the window is, but it's not something that should make you scared about it at all because it's totally doable. If you get the right rhythm and the right visual cues, it'll just happen. So don't worry about that. It's more important to do it right than to worry about oh I missed that frame. That don't focus too much on that. Uh, so yeah, I'll show off how to do it. Um, I guess I'll show off how to beat it normally too, but it should be pretty obvious. In any case, um, you have to do a setup, you have to get in a certain amount of hits, and then you need a precise, two precise visual cues and a uh, perfectly fluid rhythm. So I'll explain late. I'll explain that stuff in time. But at, when you start out here, you want to face left. Um, you cannot do this going leftwards. You have to be moving right. So we're going to start out with a damage boost. You don't have to do this. It's not important. Um, it's just something I do. You can just keep on moving right. The reason why I do this though is that you see these little spike things here. These little spike hats or whatever on the ground. If you just keep on moving right uh, from the start, you're going to end up having to do the final hits right after jumping over one of these and if you if, if your movement is wrong at all like you still have to do a damage boost anyway if your movement's wrong at all you're going to jump on the spikes and screw it up and it's just more consistent for me to just start from a dead stop and use a d boost to get moving so it'll be like this he'll hit you with the right arm here you get sent to the right you can't see it though but just keep on moving right and you have to worry about this next uh, punch here. As that punch comes down, um, once you see like those two balls, just jump. You should be able to clear this pretty well. Uh, you might need to uh, practice timing the jumps over this attack. You can also de-boost through, but that's even quicker. That's even like more precise. So just jump over it. It's really not that hard. Um, and now we go on to the uh, first phase of the uh, assault okay so um, this is a battery this is a target obviously it's it's kind of hard to show in this uh, with this video um, but basically when you see the left eye here so there's like this little face on this battery here it's really not supposed to be a face it's supposed to be a key with slots on the key but it looks like a face so let's call it a face that's going to be the left eye there. Our right, it's left. It's just now coming into view. You see the first 
line of black pixels here coming over the border of the battery jump it's actually not important for this phase um, but it, this is good practice to get the early hit um, so you want to jump here and as you fall you want to shoot you, right before you land you want a diagonal shoot um, there's going to be it, it's hard to show here but there'll be a, uh, a line a blue line between the edge of the left eye and the edge of the battery and you're you want to shoot your head when you see that first so when you first see the left eye and when you first see the gap on the other side of the left eye those are the two different visual cues and uh, you jump on the first and then you shoot on the second and another way of seeing it is basically when you're falling about to hit the ground you shoot up diagonally there are other ways to get this early hit there are other ways to do this fight this isn't the only way possible but this is a way that I've worked out that I think is relatively easy to explain and it's, uh, it's easy to know what you're doing wrong because it's very visual so um, after you get those, that early hit in and this is an early hit in because otherwise you won't be able to get a hit this early you have to either come close jump in diagonal or just go all the way underneath it and then upshoot but this way you're still moving and you're able to get a diagonal shot from a distance and that's why I call it early hit it's pretty important but only for this boss anyway 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 now that you've got it you actually have to move just a little bit you wanna center your body oh my god right underneath that uh... that line there um... okay hopefully this doesn't show up again let's see if it does i don't know what to say yeah okay um... so you see Hetty is lined up with the line right here this isn't important but you just want to make sure your head makes contact with the battery you don't want to just stop after the early hit and then upshoot you have to move right a little bit more and this is not so important for here it's more important for the second part it's a uh, something it's get the early hit don't worry about this too much just get in close it'll be intuitive to you if you're trying to kill the boss but what's important here is that you're trying to get um, seven hits in here and you can't miss like you can't just like randomly shoot off in a different direction and you can't hit so fast that you uh, you ding which means like you hit it but you don't hear the squish sound you hear the metallic sound if you hear that sound you're screwed because you have a little bit of leeway with your shots here but you still want to be relatively quick you don't need to worry about the timing so much as long as you don't uh, overshoot um, because you won't be able to get the last hit in is my point so you look here if you look here at the health it goes yellow and then orange once it's at orange that's as many hits as you can do please tell me if you can get more hits in this um, it's not super important, it would just make the second phase easier. But as far as I can tell, for some reason, um, probably because the animation is different between the first and second phase as it ends, you won't be able to get the second hit like you do on the second phase. Whatever, that's technical, it doesn't matter. But anyway, you want to see his health get to this orange level. Okay? Now, once you see that you have uh, two choices in how to move you can either wait for him to spin around or you can just immediately start moving um, so when I say wait you can do an upshoot it will definitely miss it but you will you have the time to upshoot and then start moving but you don't have the time to wait completely now the whole reason for moving early here is if you notice he's not facing the screen directly is he he's facing off at this angle this is important this means that you can get the early hit even earlier which means that you know in the first phase we got seven hits that's nice but how are we going to get another nine hits with this we can get nine hits but it's gonna be close so as you're moving when the uh, the guitar kind of like rolls down it like uh, switches bars that's when the spike will appear don't worry about it you will have to jump over the spike don't worry about it though 
And also, don't worry about his arm coming down. You see this? If you just keep on running, he's going to punch right over you. In fact, you can actually jump and not be hit by this. Though, it really depends. You don't want to test this out too much, like in a run. He can still punch you. You just have so much more room. Like, you'll be like halfway through the sprite and you'll be fine. So don't worry about anything. Just jump over that one spike. Now, here we go for the second phase. This is where everything matters. So again, it's the same cues as I mentioned in the first phase. Uh, again, you don't actually need to worry about getting the early hit on the first phase. I'm just saying do it so that you can practice for the second phase. If you get a good first phase, you can just do it again. You know, it helps. It helps a lot. So jump, hit, and then just keep on going. So remember how I was saying Robo Collector Armadillo, you want to not just hit so that you don't miss, but you want to hit as soon as you can after your last hit. So when the squish is gone, when the the like the flying stars and the white spikes are gone, immediately press B again. Just press B. Now, there's a Kazuya. It's Bino! Yeah, you about to forget Bino, huh? I was about to too. It's a useless character. Except here, this is the worst part of Bino being in this game completely at all. He's going to sabotage the hell out of you. So the best way to do it is just ignore him. Um, the last two hits, you jump and you upshoot. And just, you want to keep the rhythm of the B. Keep that rhythm going. Don't worry about Bino. Just keep the rhythm of B and then just jump. This is kind of hard to do um, when you're first learning this because like it's just going to mess you up. You just need to focus on getting those hits. Just jump to avoid him. Now, the last hit is different. This is the last thing you have to worry about. And, well, not worry. Worry is too strong, really. The last thing you need to think about is the last hit needs to be a diagonal. Okay? And this is important because on the last hit, he will start spinning or back around. You can actually get this with a regular upshot but don't don't do it um don't do it unless you're super confident you want to do a diagonal because you have so much more range like for as far as a diagonal moves it will be able to hit the battery which is moving like if you're just doing an upshot if you don't get it perfectly you ruined it even if you did everything else perfectly um you can't do a horizontal shot by the way uh you notice you may have noticed I haven't mentioned horizontal shots at all. They just won't reach. Uh, even if you jump at the top of your height in horizontal, it's not going to reach, ever. So it's all diagonals and verticals. Last hit is a diagonal. Right. Um, so yeah, let me, uh, let's show how this goes again. Hopefully I can get this, because even I, I still have trouble with this a lot. I have to practice a lot to get up this stuff. I'd recommend holding up too, so you have like a diagonal going while you're running. Just makes it easier. See? I missed a shot. And another thing I forgot to mention, because it's kind of hard to notice at first, when you're doing these shots on the batteries, it will land at different times. And this does affect the timing. Um, don't think about it, though. I can deal with it by uh, just, like, I don't know, compensating, sort of like, a, I don't want to say subconsciously, but, like, subliminally I, I don't know like it's just a a feeling type thing but like if you if you keep like a, a perfect steady timed like I, I don't know like you have some kind of macro um it won't work don't worry about this it's just something that's there it's it might be some reason why you had like a perfect rhythm but it still didn't work out you still missed a hit um 
you don't want to go slower you don't want to go fast if you have like a perfect rhythm it will compensate automatically for it I don't know how else to explain this uh, I also do recommend doing this on emulator again only worry about this if you're going for like a, a sub 39 um, like really late in like uh, learning this game this is definitely probably actually uh, adverb the most difficult part of the speedrun in terms of execution You can tell that I'm having trouble here. <laughs> yeah, this must be a pain to watch, huh? There we go. Now, that seems difficult. You also have to do that the whole stage through. So that's the last thing you have to do after everything. And you have to do that with, like, a good Stair Wars, too. If you have a good Stair Wars, you have to follow it up with this. Of course, you don't need to, but if you want an even better time. If you want 30 seconds execution base, this is what you have to do. It's difficult. It's super difficult. But it's possible. And I know it's kind of like, why don't you just edit it out? A, I don't have editing software. I'm really unprofessional. Yeah, but also, you could see all sorts of different ways that it could be messed up. Um, just Some hits were too quick. Some hits were too slow. Um, even getting everything, it just didn't work because I was missing something somewhere. Probably the early hit, I had some bad early hits. It's something that you just have to practice over and over and over again. And it's a very... It's very precise. Um, but if you really care about this run, then it will come to you. You'll get the rhythm. Maybe you can find your own rhythm. Um, but it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. It's thrilling to be able to do this off of Good Steel Wars. I'm, like, I hyped it up like, oh man, you have to do it. But if you can do it, you are showing off the best this game has to offer in terms of just, uh, pure skill. Because, like, it's not even just your playing. You have to worry 
I keep on using the word worry, but like you have to deal with that you're worrying, that you're worried you will miss it, that you're worried you'll miss one hit. You need to be able to put away all those doubts by just pure confidence alone. And if you can do that, it's invigorating. And uh, this game is very steady, um, lots of RNG, and there's good movement and stuff, but it's not really that exciting of a run. It's, it's pretty laid back in general. Um, I mean, I guess as you start out, it's a little more so, but as you get comfortable with the game, it's really hard to find something that gives you that type of uh, challenge. This is it. So try it out. Try it out. This was a long spiel on very short amount of levels. Oh, uh, but let me show you what happens if you don't do this. By the way, um, if you can help it, don't get actually hit by the punches because that's going to uh, do like 8 points of damage. You can only take 3 of those on full health. You probably have less than full health at this point. Don't take a punch. You can't, can't risk it. In any case, he's going to scroll the stage around. Um, you just want to stay here in the background. I'd say just even just stay still. Do this type of movement, or you can deboost, whatever. Um, you can go to the right, but I go to the left. Now, for this hit, you can't really do a diagonal shot. I mean, you sort of can, but you have to get really close. Basically, where you think the battery is, you want to jump and shoot at it. Honestly, it's very simple. Um, but if he has more health, then you want to basically go right underneath him. And don't spam. Just get those hits in. Like, hit, 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 and then just take it down. And you should be able to get... I, I'm actually not sure how much HP you can drain in one phase. I think maybe four, maybe a little bit more than that hits of damage. Um, you definitely want his health be, to be pretty low. Well, that's about it. Um, so thank you for watching this part, number four. Uh, hopefully that was entertaining. If not informative, I definitely uh, tend to be disorganized and rant a lot and use lots of pauses. So the next part is scene six. That's going to be the shmup part. Going to be a bunch of auto scrollers. But there is some interesting stuff, and then after that, moving on to the last part of the game. So thank you for watching this, and I'll see you next time.